Hi, I'm Jeff Walker with Parking Heater Products. We've been selling fuel-fired heaters and replacement parts for over 10 years with a combined industry experience of over 30 years. We're dedicated to providing quality heater replacement parts, expert customer service, fast and economical shipping, all backed by our 100% satisfaction guarantee. Check us out at DKSI.com, your trusted source for quality heater products. In this video, we're gonna look at our parking heater products Gen 1 operating switch. This operating switch operates both our five kilowatt engine heater, but it also operates our two kilowatt and four kilowatt air heaters as well. To turn the heater either on or off, we simply press momentarily the heat button. The symbol will appear the heater will do its systems check and commence the startup. When we first turn the heater on, we see a temperature flashing here. This temperature is for the air heater and if we had an air heater, we're adjusting the desired temperature from 10 degrees up to 40 degrees centigrade. To adjust the day of the week and the clock, we simply press the clock button three times and we hit the P button to enter programming. We see the day of the week flashing, we can adjust that. Today is Friday. To get to the hours, we press the clock button. We're running off of a 24 hour clock. Uh, today's time, it's three o'clock in the afternoon, so that's 15, uh, and the minutes are 51, it's 351. Press the clock button to get to the minutes, and then that, and that's correct, so we'll press that again, and we let that sit for 10 seconds, and that'll be set. Establishing a single program start. Say we want the heater to come on tomorrow morning at six o'clock in the morning. We simply press this once, enter the programming mode. The hours are flashing. It's already set for six o'clock, but we could adjust that, set that back for six o'clock. We want it to adjust the minutes. We press the minute button, the clock, and we get the minutes. We can adjust the minutes. And if we just let that sit, the clock will disappear and that icon remains to indicate that we have a program start. To deactivate the program start, we simply press the clock button and then the heat button. The symbol disappears. Establishing multiple starts. Say we have an operation where we want to have the heater come on at six o'clock in the morning and run for an hour and we want that to happen Monday through Friday. To enter the multiple program starts mode, we press the clock button twice. We hit the P button. Now down here we see the different um, start times. We go from D00 up to D7. So there's eight different start times that we have available for us. We're gonna set D00 first. To do that, we press the P button. We see the days of the week flashing, so I'm gonna take that to Monday. I hit the clock button. It'll take us to the hours. Again, we're working off of a 24 hour clock. Hit the clock button, it takes us to the minutes. Hit the clock button again, it takes us to the runtime. Now at this point, to activate this Monday at six o'clock, I hit the heat button and this symbol occurs. That indicates that this time is activated. To go to the next program time, I hit the P button and it brings me back to here. So I'll go to D01, hit the P button again. The, the days of the week are flashing and I want Tuesday so I hit the clock button, it'll take me to the hours. I'm gonna change that to six o'clock. 
Press the clock button again, takes me to the minutes. That's fine. Clock button again, it's got 120. I'm gonna bring that down to 60. Again, I wanna activate that. So I hit the heat button, it's activated. Move on. I'll go to D2 and program that. Wednesday is fine. Six o'clock, minutes, runtime. Activate it. Move on to programming the third time for Thursday. P button, Thursday's fine. Move that to six o'clock. Minutes, runtime. Activate it. Move on to the next one. Friday. Friday's good. Change the time to six o'clock. Minutes. Again, runtime. And then activate that. Now, we can get additional run times. You could have it running Saturday, Sunday, but we're gonna leave it just like that. So we do a review here and we'll see which ones we've got set. We'll go back to D00, shows Monday, six o'clock. D01, Tuesday, six o'clock and, it, and it's activated. Wednesday um, at six o'clock. Thursday at six o'clock, Friday at six o'clock, and these others aren't activated. D5, D6, and D7 are not activated. So the good thing about this is that once this is established, we can theoretically set this at the beginning of the season and the heater will start up Monday through Friday at six o'clock, run for an hour, and continue to do that the following week. Say that we have a, a holiday coming up this, uh, this next coming Monday and we want to switch that off. We can simply enter the programming mode again. We look for the Monday and we, we've, uh, we hit the P button. And you go through there and we simply hit the press press the heat button, and then that deactivates that. The other, the other times still remain activated. We've simply deactivated the Monday. If we choose that we wanted to clear all of the activated run times, we can do that by simply pressing the clock button four times the program, and then the heat button, and all of those activated times have been deactivated. Delayed shutdown. By default, the heater is set to operate for two hours. So if I switch the heater on manually, it will continue to run until 1826. That's 626. However, if I want to uh, use a delayed shutdown and have the heater operate until eight o'clock tonight, I can do that by simply entering the delayed shutdown. Press the clock button once, the program button. Now that takes us to the hours. I'm gonna set that for eight o'clock, which is 20 hours. Hit the clock button to proceed to the minutes. and then simply press the P button to confirm. We can see that the delayed shutdown is activated because the clock is, stays activated there. To cancel the delayed shutdown, we simply press the clock button and the heat button and the icon disappears.
Self-diagnostics. The heater has self-diagnostics. When we first turn the heater on, it does a systems check. It checks the voltage, it checks the different circuits, it checks the temperature levels. To demonstrate the self-diagnostics, I've disabled the fuel system. So when I turn the unit on, it's going to do a systems check, and then it gives us an error code. The E07, if we look at our manual, shows us a problem with the fuel metering pump. Once we've eliminated the error, we simply turn the heater off and turn the heater back on again. Checking the sensor parameters. The ECU constantly monitors the different systems within the heater. To be able to access that and see that, we'll turn the heater on, and then we press and hold the arrow button for five to 10 seconds. The first parameter we see is the incoming coolant temperature. We're seeing 37.7. Press the arrow button, it takes us to the next parameter. That's the outgoing temperature, 37.5. The burner temperature, 56 degrees. This is the fuel pump pulse frequency. It's not, the heater's not working right now, so it's zero. This is the blower speed, 90. And this is the input voltage, 11.9. Uh, then we get into the error codes. The last error code we had was an E07 related to the fuel pump. Error code two is also a fuel pump. There is no error code three or four or five. To leave the system monitoring, we simply press the P button and that takes us back to the home screen. Setting the system parameters, we can control some of the default settings in the heater by entering the system parameter table. To do that, we're gonna hold the arrow button and the P button for 10 to 15 seconds. first parameter that we see is the temperature setting, the initial temperature setting. This is for the air heaters and it's 20 degrees. We can control that. We switch to the next one, which is the lower default setting for the, or the lower limit for the air heater. It's 10 degrees. We can control that as well. We'll leave that at 10. The next one is the upper limit for the air heater. And we can adjust that. The next setting is uh, F4, which is the number of uh, time settings per week. Currently, we've got that set at seven, but we can also adjust that as well. The next setting is whether to use an internal sensor or an external sensor. Again, this is related to the air heater. If we want to use an external sensor, then we can change that value to one. F6 is used to reinitiate the timer's parameters. If we were to set that to one, that will reset the parameters to their default. F7 allows us to change the display temperature from Fahrenheit to centigrade. Zero uses centigrade and one sets it at Fahrenheit. To return to the original menu, we simply press the P button. This concludes our video on the Gen 1 operating switch. To find out more about our PHP heaters, check out our other videos or check us out at dksi.com. Thanks for watching. Check us out at dksi.com for quality heater products, fast and economical shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.